Hi, everyone. Thank you guys for coming to this session. I'm just going to do a quick introduction for those that don't know Cisco Meraki and a lot of our APIs. And I'm going to hand it over to our amazing C Cisco SE from our public sector in Mexico who flew here all the way from Mexico City to show off the work that he's done. Um, so a little bit about Cisco Meraki. Who here has a Cisco Meraki uh, network? Raise your hands. OK, so for those that don't know Meraki, we are the cloud-managed networking business unit within Cisco. We sell not just wireless. We also have cloud-managed switches, routers, firewalls, uh, security appliances that can do VPN and automate your entire network deployment. We recently launched a phone and a camera. All of them are cloud-managed, so there's not a single server that you need. Now, all that data that we store in that cloud is very valuable to our customers. And we're storing and hosting all that data at no cost to the customer. They're paying their license for their gear, and it includes that cloud hosting of all that data. However, that's very useful when you're deploying your network and you want to get everything out very quickly. You don't have any management servers, and you can scale up extremely quickly, deploying tens of thousands of access points, even millions of access points you can deploy on the Cisco Meraki cloud. But all that data, after you've deployed, you want to get access to that. And since it's in our cloud, you really want some of that data out. And one of the big areas where we see developers building on top of Cisco's cloud platform is analytics and user engagement, and understanding all the client devices on your network, what websites they're visiting, and how they're able to pull that data information. And built into our tools, in our Cisco Meraki dashboard, you have analytics built into the dashboard. And you can do analytics like how many people are passing by, how many people are spending time in my property. So for a retailer, this is very useful. And about 80% of my customers are completely satisfied with the built-in free included analytics. But there's that 20% of customers that really want that data out so they can analyze it and search and understand and build their own analytics, build their own graphs on top of our platform. Um, and with that, you're being tracked right now. So right now, every Wi-Fi and Bluetooth device in this area right now is being tracked in the DevNet zone. And that data is being funneled into a Splunk interface. So we're sending all of these data points of all the information of your Wi-Fi devices and Bluetooth devices moving around here are now being pulled out into Splunk so it's searchable and findable. Um, and this is really making the network and the Cisco infrastructure that you buy and install now is a platform for you to build applications on top. And Splunk is one of those top partners that we feature on our website. So you go to developers.meraki.com. We're also on developers.cisco.com. Uh, and we're part of that DevNet team. But you go to the special Meraki portal, and you're going to see videos of Splunk and the adapters for Splunk. So everything that's being demoed today is available on our website that you can download and start getting going with Splunk very quickly. So you can start pulling in location data. You can start pulling in the client data. And there's actually three different APIs that we provide in the cloud. The dashboard API gives you all the client level data, device level data, kind of like SNMP replacement. You can pull all that information out via a RESTful API. And Splunk is basically going to pull and pull that information out. And then the scanning API is the API that's tracking all the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth devices. And that data can stream directly to a Splunk database, so you can then analyze all of that. Um, and we have partners out there that build on top of that. So the dashboard API is used by service providers to really scale up their deployments and their monitoring, as well as the scanning API is used for location analytics. I'm not talking as much about the Captive Portal API because it's, not, it's really around splash pages. But you can go ahead and connect to a splash page, look for the DevNet or the Meraki Purple or the Meraki Local Measure, and you can see a splash page demo. Um, now, typically, when you're building something on top of the Cisco Meraki platform, you're going to either develop it in-house. Who here is a developer? Raise your hand if you call yourself a developer. We don't really call ourselves developers. We're, a lot of us are partners. Who here is a partner? Who here is a, a customer of Cisco? So we see customers starting to build in-house. But I always recommend, go look at the partner ecosystem. Because out there, you could go to Splunk, and you don't need to be a developer to use Splunk. You can learn how to build your own analytics on the Splunk platform. Or you could just buy a, a packaged analytics product from one of our partners. So partnering is what I recommend as a starting point if you're not a developer today. And we have a lot of data that you can pull out of the cloud. So like I said, all that valuable data sitting in the cloud, but you want to get it out into your Splunk so you can start to analyze it. So you've got logging data, but we also integrate with Cisco ICE and analytics engines. So Splunk can do all of that. 
And our big case study that we like to talk about is what we did for Mexico Conectado. This is the government of Mexico. They just said, look, we need to get Wi-Fi out in Mexico. People need Wi-Fi, people need internet, we need to bridge the gap, give people free access to the internet. So that's the goal of Mexico Conectado. So they've hired service providers and they pay the service providers to put Wi-Fi in libraries and schools and government buildings so everyone in Mexico can get free Wi-Fi. It's a really great idea. But how do they know people are using it? So they want to know what people are looking at. Are they, what's the top application? They want to know what they can do with it. So we also have tons of customers that are Splunk customers. These are just some of the names of big customers out there using Splunk with Meraki to pull data out. And we have three different adapters. They're all on the website, uh, and you can get access to those. Um, and then Juan is now going to come up and show you what he's built with Splunk on top of Meraki. Juan, are you ready? Yeah. Can I use my computer? Yes, you may. I can do these slides if you want. <laughs> OK. <laughs> well, um, I'm Juan. I'm from Mexico. I'm working with the federal government, uh, with the Ministry of Communications. Um, and I work a lot with uh, Meraki and Splunk integrations to data analytics. I will explain to you uh, how, to, how to extract data from Meraki through different methods with the data query, and then how we collect, parse, and show the information using the different uh, information uh, using the dashboard API and location API. So I will show you. The, the tools online. Yep. Give me that. Can you guys hear okay? So we have uh, four methods. I will show you four, four different methods to extract data from the, from the Meraki cloud. One, the first one is uh, using the dashboard API, uh, using the, the Splunk app, the RESTful Splunk app. So this is my, my Splunk instance. You and is this running locally, or is this uh, you're running this locally on your machine, or is it cloud-based? No, it's cloud-based. It's running in a Cisco OpenStack um, cloud. So I'm I'm running this this instance in the in the Cisco cloud. So you have already uh, applications uh, made from from Splunk. One of them is the REST API modular input. is 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 one of the easiest ways to extract the data. You can install this app, who is developed uh, by the community. And that app, the REST API app on the Splunk App Store works natively because it's a REST function. And REST is not a standard. It's really a theory of how the web should work. And the REST API feature from Splunk will connect directly to your Meraki cloud. So if you have a Cisco Meraki access point, that cloud has that information, and you can call that information via the REST API interface. So Splunk makes it easy because you just click Install, and now that app is part of your Splunk instance. So it's like a little module. You just click a button. Yes. Once you install the, the Splunk instance on the, on the REST uh, application, simply add um, the um, the URL has when you use uh, Postman as example for for test the the communication with the. With How many the people have used Postman here? Anybody? Got a couple. Well, when you use Postman, you need the URL and some headers to 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 can extract data from the cloud. So here's the this this uh, data, the URL methods, the headers, and this is the the easy way to 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 extract the data from different uh, dashboard APIs information. One of the interesting information for our projects is the traffic, because uh, all, the, all the, the data that you have in the Meraki dashboard can you extract them using the, the traffic analytics API. And you can access this page on your Meraki dashboard. So you just log in to dashboard.meraki.com, go to help, 
API docs, and all this information is now being exposed right here on your, on your dashboard. And a lot of these, these calls, so all of these endpoints, we've doubled the number of them in the last six months. So we've really opened up all of those backend infrastructure calls. Uh, so who here loves CLI? Right, one, one guy, that's good. Well, now you can also CLI to the Meraki Cloud. But it's not about the CLI to the Meraki Cloud. It's about the ability to pull that data out using Splunk and having applications run on top of that API. And that's what the API allows you to do. And so in this page, you can see all those different data sets that you can pull out. And the, the one that we, he's pulling out right here is the application traffic shaping. And if you go over to the traffic, or can you go to the traffic analytics page real quick? So uh, go, go to, uh, if, you go to, if you go to the traffic analytics page on that network, you can actually see what it looks like on our dashboard. So on our dashboard, you can see YouTube is the top application. Right? And YouTube's a very common application in Mexico. It's yes. free, right? I mean, what, what do you, do you use YouTube a lot? Yes, you, a lot of YouTube. So yes. YouTube's pretty popular there. And now we're going to pull that information out and put it into Splunk and see if Splunk can do more analysis on top. So that's one of the, of the methods. Uh, let, me, let me show, once you have the traffic here, Shows like that. It's the same information that you had in the da in the traffic analytics dashboard, but using the the REST uh, model of the of the APIs, you just track the, the data from from the Meraki cloud and put them in a Splunk. I so will show you the four methods, and then I will show you the the how to 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 parse and and, and make reports and dashboards using using a Splunk. So. So it, it, it doesn't look very pretty, right? But, no. but you can see it's kind of human readable. So this is a JSON format or JSON format. And JSON is, I call it JSON because it's actually human. It's human readable. You can look here, you can see the miscellaneous secure web. I can see, uh, let, uh, let's see, proxy.google zip right here. All the different applications, all that raw data is streaming into Splunk. And then Splunk can now analyze all that data and start to graph it. So let me use, I already have my queries to, to save time. So once you have the, the, the data in Splunk, you use a simple command named SPAT. A SPAT command in Splunk convert the data to, to, to JSON uh, objects to, to easy, to easy lock up and, and, and make some uh, operations with the, with the data. For example, here, I will count all the visits of, of, the, of the different applications that we have in this, in this instance. So with this, this uh, simple query, with all the data that I have, I make uh, a count of the application and how many visits each application has. It's a, it's a simple query to, to show you. Another one. I will show you uh, the traffic per application. Yes, I will use SPAT to convert the data to, to JSON objects. And then I will use Splunk operators to sum, summarize all the traffic received and all the traffic sent uh, that we, we already have in the, in the, in the logs. So if, if I run this, this query, you look at the application, how many visits per application, and the traffic sent and received, yes, in, in, in kilobytes. So you're basically yeah. recreating the Meraki dashboard. Yes. But what can you do that Meraki can't do? Because I mean, we already have that data on the dashboard. Can you graph it? Can you, can you, can you show us some cool graphs? Yes, sure. Let me do uh, a an, an last uh, oh, sorry. operation, because um, I will show you the same data, but in gigabytes. You can oh, do yeah. all, all the, the arithmetic operations uh, that you, you need, because the, the, Meraki, the Meraki data that you receive is in, in kilobytes. Yes, so, so you have to convert to gigabytes. You, you need to convert, yeah. Once you convert, you can make use the, 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 the built-in um, uh, uh, um, So what's that? So where, where's YouTube on here? Let's find the YouTube one. 
Yes, it's, it's a lot of a lot of data here, but well, you can you can convert the data for, to to another another um, kind of 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 view. Okay, I will. It's a lot of a lot of applications, so I will use another command to put only the top ten or top uh, fifty applications. So I can see them in an easy in an easy way. Yes, that's cool. You can see YouTube right there, just like on the dashboard. We could see all the the applications. Now you can see that in Splunk, and so you now can analyze that data in whatever way you want and graph it whichever way you want. So now you can kind of compare different environments. So maybe you have two different shopping malls and you want to compare the, the traffic at one shopping mall versus another shopping mall or libraries versus government versus your schools, you might see that YouTube is used at the, at the library more than anything. Perfect. So the another uh, method that you have to extract data is using the location API. The location API, you want to explain the... Um, so how many people have Wi-Fi enabled on their phone right now? Swipe up or everybody? Yeah, it's 100% of people. How many people have Bluetooth enabled on their phone? Pretty good, 50, at least fit more than 50%. How many people are wearing a Fitbit right now? Nobody? No wear wearables? No wearables? Apple Watch? We got, so all of those devices are trackable. And getting that information out uh, is supposed to be easy to get that information out. And on the dashboard, we can track all those devices. And we'll show you what the Meraki, I showed you the, the screenshot of what Meraki looks like, but now we can do that in Splunk as well. Yes, so using another uh, application developer by the, the community, name it uh, TA Meraki, you can, you can uh, catch the data from the location APIs that the, the Meraki dashboard sent to you in a in streaming mode. So these are a lot of data. For example, I, I enable the, um, the data from the, this event. And right now, since yesterday, we have uh, 30 million proofs of captured data. 13 million pieces of 13 pieces. million API updates in yes. just the last two days for this area right here. Yes, each each uh, piece of data have uh, several um, fields that you make you can use to build all the um, the intelligence and analytics that you need. Okay, for example, let me track my um, the use of my all the all the all the probes uh, sent by my my iPhone using my my Mac address. Okay, there are uh, more than uh, four thousand uh, probes, and I can use this data to make an, an live tracking using a built-in um, um, functionality of, of, of Splunk. So you can see all the steps that I, I do in the, in, the past, in the past days. So it's path tracing you. Path tracing my... So that's yes. something that we can't do. So the Meraki dashboard doesn't do path tracing. We're not going to, we don't, we don't invade people's privacy and track their exact location over time. But Splunk can graph out all the different locations that you were over time. So if you have a large citywide Wi-Fi network, you could track where someone was within the city. Or if you have a large campus, you could track where someone was within that campus. So Splunk gives you that power to look at the data set from a different angle. That's pretty cool. Is that is that your device? It's my device, yeah, this one. <laughs> okay. So this is uh, using the location API. You have a lot of, of data, so you can make uh, a lot of analytics and intelligence using them. But this is an, an, a quick example that the, the views that you can make using a Splunk. 
So the third one is maybe you create some uh, Python scripts to 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 manipulate the data that you received from the from the the, the, the Meraki dashboard to add some data additional to the to the dashboard uh, provides you. As example, this is this is um, the, my so, some uh, scripts that I have. I use uh, uh, Python to um, So what's the script do for us? Okay. When you go to the Meraki dashboard and make a query, an API query, you receive all the data that you need. But you need to identify the device that you are using. In a big implementation as the, we have in Mexico, we need to identify all the all the devices each of the each one each device that we do the query to um, use the, the that views in in Splunk so I make some uh, Python scripts to add data to the to the JSON object that we received from from Meraki and append data to identify that site the uh, data relevant for the for the for the government so like a site id like a location like a, the the postal address on any any uh, information that you that you need so this script goes to to meraki extract the data and then append the re the the relevant information regarding each site that, that you need, and then uh, dumps so the, the info to to, to So now you can get you can get someone's home address from their MAC address, or someone's uh, someone's current location based on where they are. So you say, hey, I want to get all the clients on my network, and I want to find this this person because uh, there there's I see a security incident on a MAC address, and I want to locate that person somewhere. And I don't. I see it's on a switch here, but I don't know where that switch is. So I can go up the link, up the link from the client to the device to the network, and see exactly where they are, what address they are at, based on a MAC address. So you could do a find of a person on your network, and that's something you could search for and see a map of uh, on the Meraki dashboard. But to be able to automate that and pull that out and s send that information to your logging system to say, hey, we see this rogue user on our network at this location and this time. So I use I use the, this script to to append these uh, these fields to the to the JSON object and then put them in into into Splunk. So you can build your own Python scripts running in your in your in your servers and and the result of of your scripts you can uh, inject the data to Splunk to analyze with uh, the the all the data that you have in the in the different ways. This this method is using the um, the, the a functionality of Splunk named uh, scripts. You you can reference the data input from Splunk to a to a specific uh, script that you have in your in your in your server instance. So in this example, the result of this query is injected. Into Splunk to uh, to further analyze. Okay. So what kind what kind of data could you bring in to combine with the Meraki location data, combine with the Meraki uh, device data? And now you can combine other data sets in there as well. So you could start to compare, uh, you know, entirely other data sets. Splunk is a nice tool because now you're not just looking at your network data. You can take in multi-vendor network data or other, or other location information that you want, and you can combine it into a single database that's all searchable and linkable. And so his scripts are basically linking all those different data sets, and now you have a single management and single security and logging interface. So once you have the, the data in Splunk, you can make the magic. And for example, we, are we, we work with several service providers in Mexico to, to deliver the, the connectivity services to the government. So 
one of the the issues that we have is we want to 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 migrate the use of SNMP to another to to another uh, modern methods to of, of monitoring that using the the dashboard API we can receive the status of of the of the device so when my Pyth with my python script i inject the data to splunk and then i can make some reports to 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 simulate the um, snmp uh, features so who here loves snmp i saw a two <laughs> Does it, do you know what S and SNMP stands for? Simple. Is SNMP simple? No. SNMP is far from simple. But a lot of service providers like Mexico Conectado are moving away from SNMP. They want to replace it with something better. And APIs give you a better way to get that same SNMP info, but in a nice, reusable, programmatic, splunkable way. So in this, in this easy table, you can see the site ID, the name of the site, the network name. This, this data is relevant to the Mexican government. It's uh, the, the, the ID of the site. The MAC address of the site, the public IP that the service provider use, the current status, their postal address, uh, Latin geo, uh, Latin longitude uh, location, and the availability of the site using the field status. Okay. This one's only 80% right here. 80% uh -oh. availability. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They will uh, receive yeah. a penalization <laughs> of their <laughs> contract. So um, th this table looks uh, easy, but if you see the, 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 the query, it's, it's complex. Because you have a lot of data from different sources in, in, the, in the Splunk. And once you have the, the, the data in Splunk, you can use the, the Splunk language to build all the data and, and data crush, um, crushing that, that, you, that you need to build tables or, or graphs or whatever you need to, to, your, to your project. OK? So how, do, how does someone build this? We can't all hire you. Sorry? We can't, we can't all hire Juan because <laughs> he, he works for Cisco. But we do. Th there are a lot of partners out there that have Splunk skills. Uh, I encourage you to try Splunk. Uh, you can sign up for a six-month free 10 gigabytes a day, uh, and you can start playing with Splunk. But there are professional services out there that will do what Juan has done and do it as a service. So if you need help with Splunk, Splunk can be hired, as well as advanced services out there that can do this type of more complex Splunking. Once you, you do the, the, um, the Splunk uh, search, you can save the search in the two kind of, of external views, dashboards or reports. That's the, the, the view that the end user uh, see of the Splunk instance. For example, I, 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 I make some, some reports. I will use the, 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 the Conectado instance here. This is, uh, this is another instance. This is a, is a, is a, a, a dashboard that um, collects the data from 80,000 sites from different service providers in Mexico. This is 80,000 sites in Mexico? 80,000 sites. Wow. We are we are adding more in the we are currently in the current development of the of this solution. But and is that right YouTube, now, YouTube's being the number one receive, but Facebook's the number one upload, which makes a lot of sense. A lot of people are posting to Facebook and watching YouTube, so YouTube has more downloads and Facebook has more uploads. Yes, so this data is is uh, saved in a feature. Called dashboard. You, every <clears throat> every search that you do. For example, I will count the the clients of of um, 
let me let me make a quick search. Using the dashboard APIs, I simply count the different clients that we have in uh, in a in a network, uh, five thousand clients. So once the query are ready, you define the visualization the visualization that you need. In this case, is a is a is a simple piece of data. So you I. I I select the single value. You have a, a lot of, of, of visualization uh, um, options, and then I can save this in a in a report or dashboard. I can create a, a, a new so you just built a dashboard on top of our dashboard API. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. Save. Done. This query, save it in a dashboard. So I can view the dashboard. And I see the, the, the so data. So now you send this to your boss and say, hey, look, I built you a dashboard. Yes. Uh, it has all the analytics that you asked for. Uh, and you just did it with Splunk without having to host a server, set up like an uh, environment to, to build a dashboard or hire a developer. It's just all Splunk commands to do that client. And that's a, that's a command that's pretty simple to write. Uh, obviously, as you get more advanced, you keep adding in your Splunk uh, commands get longer and longer. Um, And this is for Cisco Live right now. This is the data from our CMX API, uh, which we've renamed a scanning API. So the Meraki scanning API is getting all those Wi-Fi and Bluetooth devices. And you can see the number of clients. You can see over the last over time. And you can see that heat map. So very quickly, you can build your own analytics dashboard. Now, Meraki's dashboard has a lot of this capability built in. So you still ask, well, why would I want to customize it? But a lot of people want something that we don't offer. So if you have a feature that you want, you might be able to build it faster than we can because you just want to customize it so that your, your executive can see exactly what they want. Or so you can have a nice, beautiful network monitoring dashboard so your NOC can have this up on the wall and look at how many people are in the building. Uh, maybe your security guy also wants to know how many Wi-Fi devices are walking around the building at the time. Any question regarding Splunk? Who here has used Splunk? A couple. Who here wants to use Splunk? <laughs> Can you use SNMP? Can you, uh, what is the relationship between SNMP and Splunk? Can you use SNMP with Splunk? Yes, can you use him? But we are trying to migrate the SNMP use to the APS. Uh huh. You could combine SNMP and APIs. Yes, yes. I, I would always say the API can configure SNMP on with Meraki. You could say I want to configure all my switches to have this SNMP community or users, and then you could pull all your devices with SNMP. You can also pull the Meraki cloud. We have a cloud-based massive mega proxy for SNMP, so you don't even need to access your local network devices. You just SNMP pull snmp.meraki.com, and you can get your device information right from the cloud. So you could do that as well. Uh, but we built the API so that you can have a more secure, uh, manageable, and programmable interface. Because the API is secured with an API key that's SSL encrypted, So and you can quickly revoke it. If you lose your SNMP credentials, well, it, yeah, you know, you're going to have to do a lot of change management. So it's a, it's a more secure way, and SNMP can get lost in the internet because it's UDP, it's APIs. You get a call back when you get a failure, so you have a little bit more error messaging in an API. So it's a little more, a little more developer friendly, would you say? Mm -hmm. But SNMP is still supported. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. 
Okay. Well, I'll do a little plug if. Why? Or you go ahead. Why, why, why no, what, the the user case? Why we start using uh, Splunk? Because all you data that you see uh, is is uh, looks like the the currently Meraki dashboard, right? It's, it's the same information, the the pies, the the graphics, the tables, the the, the, the top visited sites, all the information is the same, but. In some in some uh, cases like like ours, the the Mexico Conectado is, is a initiative of the government to connect uh, uh, public uh, sites of the government to free internet. Uh, we already have uh, forty five thousand sites connected using uh, the Meraki solution, but the challenge is that the the the, the each site the, the 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 sites are uh, delivered by several service providers. Yes, the, depends of the geography of the country. Each service provider had a number of of of, of sites. Um, so, how many of you have a different have multiple IT organizations within your organization? Right, it's difficult getting the data from one team and another team. So, with this. The government was able to say, you know, you don't even need to give us the data. We're going to take it directly from the API. You don't, the data comes back to our cloud, and the government can take it right from the cloud. As long as the ISP gives them the API key, they can pull that information out. So they can get it themselves rather than waiting for that team or that service provider to pass that information to the government. They have that capability via the API to pull all the information out that they want. And then they can see which ISP is performing well. They can see that ISP A has only 50% availability, where ISP B has 100% availability. And they see ISP C has only 85% availability, but they have more users on their networks because they're placing them in better locations, like libraries and schools. So they have more usage. So you're going to be able to rank and rate all your different service providers and see who's doing a better job. So that's that's the the reason that we start using uh, a big data solution like Splunk to consolidate the information of silos uh, of of information the, of each service provider. So we are current. We already have in Splunk eighty thousand sites. We are a work in progress to to add. Uh, the 45,000 sites where our expectatives is finished the project the, 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 the next month, the, in, in the, the last day of March. So we can have a single pane of glass for the government with the data of every service provider and then, make, then can uh, build a, a, a government analytics and intelligence information from their sites. Call okay. Yeah. Ready. So, encourage you guys to first go to developers.meraki.com on your phone or on your laptop. If you go to that website, who likes free gear? Who likes free gear? The free, free access points? If you sign up for Meraki Developers Program, you get an email from me. Send me an email back. I need a free access point because I want to try Splunk. I want to do this development work. If you already have gear, you don't need gear, that's fine. Uh, there's a lot of resources on that web page. So go to developers.meraki.com, find all this. There's a Splunk adapter for Dashboard API on there. There's a Splunk adapter for Syslog. Mm -hmm. Syslog, everyone loves to log. Uh, and there's a Splunk adapter for the location, location. API. So all, that, all the adapters are linked there, uh, as well as they're on the Splunk app store too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then go to dev.splunk.com and get yourself a free license. Uh, and then invite all your coworkers to that license and get them to log into Splunk, build a dashboard, and send that dashboard to someone uh, and show them that, hey, we could be using Splunk as our single pane of glass across all of our different vendors or at least across all of my Meraki stuff so I can do more than the Meraki dashboard. Um, and of course, when you get your Meraki gear, check out all the different analytics that you have built in because Splunk is really an add-on and to build on top of those analytics. Um, and then start digging and splunking. Is that is, is that the right? Am I is that a verb now? Splunking. Okay. Splunking. Splunking. 
Okay. Questions? Any All right. Well, if you guys have any questions after, you're welcome to come up and uh, ask us questions. So thank you, guys.